Professor. There's something you must come see immediately. Slow down. Tell me everything, slowly and clearly. <sighs> Professor, we have found... Take a breath. An entrance. An entrance into the mountain. An entrance into the mountain? Yes, Professor. Exactly where the findings we discovered indicated. Incredibly, we were able to decipher the coordinates. It was not easy, I can tell you. Where is it located, precisely? Precisely on the northeast side of the cliff. Unfortunately, it is covered by a thick layer of ice, probably formed over centuries. If not millennia, inlays are visible. Their shapes are not natural. We are facing an unprecedented discovery. When was this discovered? Yesterday morning, Professor. The radio was unusable from there due to the strange magnetism present. I immediately set out to inform you. Give me a summary of the discovery. The frozen findings discovered near the camp with an advanced coordinate system. They led to a specific place on the side of the gigantic hill. There we discovered an entrance, completely frozen over, but not of natural formation. The radio does not work due to the strange magnetic field in the area. So, I left immediately to inform you. What an incredible find! Prepare for immediate departure. Certainly, Professor. I'll get the sleds ready. And Johnson? Yes, Professor? Pack dynamite. Lots of dynamite. As good as done. I'm beside myself with excitement. The work of a lifetime. Could it be one of those legendary civilizations like Atlantis or Mu? Speculation is pointless. I cannot wait to admire it firsthand. All is ready, Professor. To you goes the honor. Gentlemen, here, today, we make history. In this remote place, at the edge of the world, we, with me to guide you, have made the most sensational discovery ever recorded in the annals of history. Signs of intelligent life in a place no human has ever set foot before. This will be spoken of for eons to come, and it will radically change everything we thought we knew forever. Professor, everything he requested is ready. Thank you, Danforth. It contains everything necessary for priming the explosives. The layer of ice that is formed around the rim prevents the lid from being opened. Exactly what I need. I've done it. Everything needed to make the detonator is contained inside. All that remains is to collect them and mount the charge. Perfect. Now all that's left is to make that dynamite do its thing. Everything is in place. Stay back. We did it! Let's go inside to check. Atwood! Danforth! Dyer! Organize the equipment, gather the men, tie up the dogs, and follow me! still can't believe what we have discovered. Professor, wait for us! Bring the torches. You can't see a thing in here. Wow. 
What do we have here? We need lights. Oh my god, what's in these frozen alcoves? Come see! Gentlemen, within this ice lie organic forms unlike anything we've ever seen. Unbelievable! What a sensational discovery! Hell! It will not be easy to pierce that layer of ice. Right, Professor? Not at all, Daya. Professor! Yes, Atwood? Do you know Pebodi from the engineering department? Yes, I think I remember him. He was working on a new type of drill that would do just that for us. True. The whole campus was talking about it just before we left. Great. We have to go back to camp to contact the university. The radios don't work here. One more thing we need to figure out. Remain here and keep updating the findings. We'll meet back there later. Hey, what's this here? What? There's something stuck in the ice. Help me get it out. This could be worth a fortune. You know that everything recovered from an excavation must be handed over to the professor. Really? And what if I told you that I know someone who will buy it? And you'll never have to work again for the rest of your life. Sounds tempting. Let's see what it is first. The unnatural silence, devoid of life, only the sound of the sea. Lone hadn't heard anything else for days. He felt no pain, but he could not stand. He could only crawl. At least now he could do that, and felt slightly stronger. But where to go? That was the problem. How would he escape from that hellish town? Innsmouth. to start. Well, it's not exactly easy for me to tell you everything I've been through. There's a turn of phrase that has stuck with me over the years. I read it in one of those collections of fantastical stories that are so popular these days. The author says something about the sea of ignorance in which we all swim, and he is dead on. How I would love to have drowned in that sea, and to have continued my life as if nothing else mattered. Maybe I could have died happy, or at least at peace, but I digress. This all began for me with a call from a certain Armitage, Barkham's Miskatonic University. His brother had gone missing, and all the clues led to a remote coastal town, Innsmouth. And yes, I found Armitage's missing brother. That he was already gone, and from a violent death, chained to the wall of the labyrinthian caves beneath the town. The sole survivor I met was a fellow missionary priest, still alive. The fools. They were crazy enough to believe that they could freely preach their religion in Innsmouth. Priest told me a story I dismissed as mere invention at first. 
tiara holding the power to awaken unclean creatures from the fringe of imagination. But in the end, I came to believe his tale. I recovered that unholy relic. There, a shapeless mass, a horror beyond description, surged forth and attacked us. The priest managed to get away. I was not quite so lucky. However, here I stand, able to tell you all of this, and it's from this point on that I want you to hear my story. What the hell? But what? That insane creature grabbed me. After that, I remember nothing. I have to get out of this godforsaken town. At least I'm still in one piece. Smoking disgusts me now. Perhaps that's at least one positive outcome from all this? Anyway, I never learned how to swim. I'd rather die right here than go back in there. The entrance to the labyrinth of caves that runs beneath Innsmouth. Looks like a plank from a broken crate. I'd say, knowing what goes on around here, that the crate was most likely thrown overboard in the scramble to avoid official scrutiny. An idea is forming in my mind about how to get myself over to the other side. Let's give this a try. Some strong looking reeds could come in handy. can use them to tie the planks together. This should work. slightest sound, please. Rest at ease. You're lucky you ran into me first. I'm the only one in town you can trust. I just want to get out of here. To the northeast, you will find an old abandoned railway that leads out of town. And now, I'll go distract them for you. You get to move on, and keep your head down. Thank you. I hope I can somehow repay you one day. A good bottle of whiskey is never unwelcome. Speaking of which... Well, do you have any whiskey for the good Zadok? Shut up, old man. Why do we even let this smelly old tramp camp out at our town? So, about that whiskey... Or would you like me to blab some of your secrets to the guy who works in the drugstore? After him. Sure. I gotta get out of here.
He traveled in seclusion out of fear that they were following him. He managed to get back home, to his Arkham. He couldn't, however, rid himself of the sense of dread he had brought back with him. I've dragged my sorry self back home. Now comes the difficult part. But first, I must grab some shut-eye and a change of clothes. Underling number seven, report! Master. I hear you have some news of interest for me. Yes, Master. Sadly, I must report that the Marshes have failed to keep the tiara in our possession for the upcoming ritual. Very unfortunate. You just can't trust those damn fishmen. But, we will remedy that. Continue. Yes. Yes, Master. One of our Innsmouth affiliates reported something extraordinary. Some private investigator was attacked by the unspeakable creature that dwells in the Labyrinth of Tunnels, yet somehow survived. What? Nobody has ever survived a Shoggoth. Track him down. I gotta inform Armitage of his brother's ugly end. Maybe I will also tell him something about the strange tiara, and about Elliot running off with it. Perhaps his contacts can look into all that further. It could actually be dangerous, but who could even tell after all I've been through? Surely they don't lack for weirdness in that town. Armitage? Lone, you're back? Finally. I've been waiting on news from you for weeks. I was beside myself with worry. Weeks? Yes. 33 days to be precise. But enough with the prattling. Have you found my brother? I'd rather talk about it in person. When can I meet you at Miskatonic? Immediately. I'll see you shortly then. Armitage was right. I must have passed out there on that shore for longer than I thought. Miskatonic University. Lone Carter. Yes? Go on in. Armitage is waiting for you. Thanks. Armitage? Lone, please come in. Sorry, I was just wandering around studying some texts. You look well. I have some bad news for you. Ugh. Go on. Your brother didn't make it. I'm sorry. How did it happen? I'm not sure you want to know the details right now. It's what I paid you for. I found him in the tunnels that run under Innsmouth. I didn't make it in time. Who did this? Who? It seems the laws of civilized society mean nothing in Innsmouth. Apparently your brother and Elliot stuck their noses somewhere they shouldn't have. This Elliot you speak of was dead too? No, he was still alive when I got there. We both escaped with our lives by a hair. An impossible creature attacked us. I still have no idea how I managed to survive intact. Unfortunately, I don't know where Elliot ended up. I'll need a few days to make some inquiries. 
I will get back to you soon. In the meantime, try getting in touch with one of my contacts, a man by the name of William Blanco. He writes for those cheap pulp magazines, but is also an expert on the occult. He often comes by here. He simply devours the rare texts that only we possess. Sadly, I do not know his address or even a telephone number, but I'm sure for a detective of your reputation, finding him will be but a trivial matter. Discuss with him everything you have discovered, and I'm sure he will get back to me. I'll see you later then, I guess. Multitude of books. Multitude of books. Good morning. How can I serve you? Name's Lone Carter from next door. Yeah, I've seen you around, but I haven't bumped into you for a while. You look like one of those investigators from the novels. Not without quite as much work, sadly. Nice to meet you. I'm Calvin. I run this shop. It was founded by my grandfather, Melvin. Hence the name. Nice to meet you, pal. Maybe you can help me out. What are you dealing here? A multitude of books and magazines. Some quite rare. I'm looking for one of those rags that publishes them hack horror stories. Something like Weird Tales? Yeah, exactly. I'm afraid we're out of stock. Damn it. It's all right, Lone. It's all right. Do you know of anyone else who sells it locally? We are the exclusive dealers. Maybe you could find someone in Boston. I ain't going all the way to Boston just to buy some rag. I can tell this is important to you. Maybe I can help you out. Really? Thanks. Slow down now, slow down. I happen to collect those magazines. Great. Can you tell me the publisher's name then, please? There's just one slight problem. In order to keep them pristine, I do not allow even myself to open them. That could damage them. Why even buy them? You could never understand the heart of a collector. What do you want for just a sneak peek? Do you work in this building? Yeah, I even live in it to be honest. What's that got to do with anything? Perfect. In order to give you the information you're after, I will need you to do something for me first. Well, ain't you just a smarmy little bastard? Tread lightly, Lone. It's either this or a trip to Boston for you. Or you can wander around the city asking everyone if they know who publishes weird tales. I could just go to the patent office and ask who registered the title. You surely could. But the bureaucracy is notoriously slow. Who knows which dusty shelf this one vital piece of information sits on. But I feel you have a certain urgency. And the favor I ask shouldn't occupy you for too long. Well, get on with it. I might just put some lead in his head. Lone, deep breaths. Dr. Ivory says I need to learn to control my anger. Do you know Foreman? Yep. He lives on the same floor as me. Great. That bastard's been boasting around about having a better collection than mine. Which is obviously impossible. Oh, my breaking heart. Anyway, I always end up second best at our club meetings. Now. Each of us has a list with every item in our collection pinpointed down to the iota. I need you to find Foreman's list, Carter, so I can expose how lacking it is in front of everyone. Are you aware that breaking and entering is a serious crime? Of course, but you seem the kind of man who might find small detours from common ethics. I'll see what I can do. Mailman must have been by while I was out. Strange. I was gone for more than a month and there was no mail waiting. And then the moment I'm home, here some is.
Loan, I've been trying to get in touch with you for days. I absolutely need you to look into a case I'm working on. Come as soon as you can to the crime scene on Walton Street. A. Logan. Alan. Haven't heard from him in ages. If he needs me, I'm only too happy to help him out. A spare set of lockpicks. A good find. I lost my last pair in Innsmouth. This could come in handy. Nothing useful here. Behind this board is a hole that looks directly into the neighbor's room. It seems that not plugging it turned out to be the best choice after all. Bless my laziness. That seems to be what I'm looking for. I can see Foreman's desk from here. Over there is the list I need. I can't get there. I'll have to come up with something else. A long and thin object. It will probably end up being of some use eventually. Well, more so than merely as a broom anyway. I could always put it back together if need be. It's long enough to reach the list, but it has no way to grab it. It would serve no purpose. You're not supposed to be in here. Wait. Alone, my dear friend. Alan, I came as soon as I got your letter. What letter? This one. I didn't send you any letter. I would have just called you up on the telephone. You're one of the few who own such a device of the devil. Witty as always, I see. Someone knew about this case you're on and saw fit to involve me in it. I wonder who it could be. Well... Since you're here anyway, you might as well give us a hand. Just like old times. I slaved like a dog, and you occasionally had a flash of brilliance and solved the case outright. <laughs> All the while, you were busy scarfing down donuts. Such excesses of sugar intake can block one's higher reasoning faculties, you know. <laughs> Same old loan. Ritual homicide? Bud, fill my friend in on this whole gruesome affair. Certainly, Captain. The landlady called the station this morning to report that she had found Mr. Gillum hanging, mutilated, here in his room, with Sarah Rupert disemboweled in the bed. Did the lady in question have access to the victim's room? That has yet to be established. I spoke with her earlier. Apparently, she found the door ajar. I doubt she was lying, given the state of shock she was in. It's unlikely she has the stomach for such a macabre act. We had to call an ambulance to tend to her. She was fainting at my feet. The corpses were gutted. Liver and pancreas of both have been removed. And even more disgustingly, his eyes and mouth have been stitched shut. Besides the fact that his lower half is still yet to be found. Records show that the girl over there, Sarah Rupert, did not reside here. It's possible they were dating and she was merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. 
The victim was a student of parapsychology at Miskatonic University, originally from Haverhill. He lived here to take advantage of the low-rent neighborhood, probably couldn't afford a room on the university campus. Difficult for such a person to make mortal enemies. He was most likely just easy prey for our killer due to his withdrawn lifestyle. We will investigate his acquaintances more thoroughly. In the meantime, feel free to take a look around, but don't touch anything. Alan? Yes? How's it going? Good, loan. A lot has changed since you left. My promotion up the ranks has been quite stressful. Ah, congratulations. I hadn't heard. Thanks. I'd like to know who sent that letter in your name. I have no idea how to look into that any further. But it weighs heavily on my mind, too. They know who both you and I are. Yep. Can you tell me anything more about the victim? We've already given you all the information we have so far. I get a feeling this is going to be a rough one. But luck sent you here, right? <laughs> yep, luck. This ain't the nicest of neighborhoods, if I remember correctly. Right. But it is not unheard of to find decent people of lesser means living here for the rock-bottom rent. Bud looks like your typical run-of-the-mill policeman. He is. Also quite the bigot, apparently. But with excellent hearing, Mr. Carter. Oops. I'll let you know if I find out anything else. Thanks, Lone. I owe you. A blank piece of paper. Nobody could say this isn't a nice, bright room. Horrible. Who could do such a thing? An integral part of the crime. A very laborious ritual. The victim's blood was collected in this basin. Weird residue lay around it. Almost like someone drank from it. Poor girl. A strange mechanism to block out the sun. Poor girl. Sarah Rupert. Poor girl. Surgical work. The internal organs have been removed. What kind of maniac would do this? I don't want to touch it. I don't want to touch it. Ugh, I don't want to touch that. Probably the lair of some rodents. Please do not touch anything, Lone. The crime scene photographer is on his way. Sure. Do you remember any other details? No, I would say none. 